Hi guys, this is Mitch from Hothead Productions, and this is a uh, tutorial on rotoscoping. Uh, David and I have been working on this movie called Gray State, and it is a lot of uh, it includes a lot of visual effects and special effects and things. So, as with any film that you might do or any project you might do that has special effects, there is always going to be rotoscoping. And when people that know what rotoscoping is hear it, they run the other direction as fast as they can. For those that don't know what rotoscoping is, that's where you're basically taking an object and cutting it out frame by frame and then using that uh, cutout to place on top of things. So if you have an actor that's shot on green screen and they need to walk, like say they're walking down the street and they need to walk behind street poles or street lamps or things like that, then rotoscoping is where you would actually cut them out so that it would look like they're behind the poles instead of actually in front of it. Here is uh, the one that I'm working on right now is the gun run. This is a scene where our one of our main characters is at the U of M, and this piece has probably 15, 10 or 15 different elements that have had to be treated. So here's a quick preview of a work in progress, and you'll see where I need to work on it. So here's this. And as you can see, uh, the main character shooting around, there's guys up in the background, dead civilians on the ground, and then the camera's moving around, going past them, and there you see the part that I have to fix and work on. Some of the things that we have in here, I'll go up to uh, Danny here first, and we ended up shooting him on a green screen, so we, you can see that we have several different uh, mats here. And what we ended up doing was you take your character, you find out your timing, and then you duplicate it and make a pre-composition of that. When you go inside your composition, you can do everything you want to it, and it doesn't matter what the colors are. Like up here, you can see his hair is purple. There's green spill. It just looks really shitty and bad. So, But when you go back to your original uh, composition, you can see that we have, this is just, if you took the track mat off, you can see that it is the entire full thing. And when you turn the track mat on to alpha mat of this, it only takes out the alpha of it. So anything that's visible is going to be there, has transparency. Anything that's been keyed out, which would be the green screen back here, that then disappears. So we end up punching out alphas instead of doing everything to the original footage because then you end up with weird colors and it messes up your screen. So when you do an alpha mat, it, you end up with a cleaner look. Back to our original composition, you can see we have different elements like uh, these multicam guys in the background over here. And I'm doing this at a quarter res. But these multicam guys in the background here, you can see that um, if we go to our inside that composition, the colors are all off and all that, but not worried about that. Let's go to this one. Let's just solo this one. And then we'll turn the effects off. And you can see we ended up shooting these guys on white in on a psych so that we could get full body shots and then key them out by doing a luma key which takes out which looks at values of it so it looks like rgb values up here and they're going away but it takes the high whatever threshold you set anything above that becomes invisible anything below that is visible so we did that so that we could get full body keys without having to set up a green screen and walking all over it and ruining it whereas this way we can just repaint the floor and the wall and we can get away with it and what you end up doing I'll do a quick demonstration for you they're off there you go there's the feet and um, I'll do a quick demonstration for you if I duplicate this layer and then solo it and then I take off all of the effects that are on there every all these things that I ended up doing to it so that what there you get your original plate what I learned to do was I started looking up here in the info bar once I roll over this the thing you'll be able to see it but I started looking at the RGB values and you can see that the blue in it is the farthest away from the other ones so what I've ended up doing is instead of trying to do a key on this with key light or prime at key or something like that it starts to eat away at everything. So if you only do a Luma key based off of RGB values, and I will use the blue because that is the farthest away. So in here, we'll go to Luma key and we'll apply a Boris Luma key to it. And it's keying out the darker and it automatic. It starts off 
from Luma, but if you take it from Blue, and then you can play with your threshold, and you want to key out the brighter so that the white goes away and you get this. And all you have to do is just play with your threshold a little bit to bring back what you want or what you don't want. Now, to get into the actual rotoscoping part of it, which you're all so excited to see, when we'll just find out where the guys are. And you can see I have um, around here, you can see the contact shadows in there. I got rid of the white on it. But um, let's go find where they are. So here we go. This uh, back group. So we go inside there. We have the same setup with the uh, the raw compos or the raw file, and then the composition of it. So we can do all the effects in here. And all of these masks you can see are the different areas that I have had to cut out because when you're doing these Luma keys and then key light or primat key or all these different things, you end up with problems. Like on this one, the white scarf around her neck is showing, and on the floor here, the contact shadows are very obvious because that's much darker than the outside walls were out here. So what you end up doing is you end up going frame by frame and rotoscoping that part out. So I'm working on these shadows down here, or the, yeah, these contact shadows down here. And at this frame, I have this mask down here selected, and it is off. I will bring it back up. But if we go to the next frame, you can see it comes back. And right now I have it on add so that I can see what I'm actually cutting out. I will eventually turn that to subtract so I can get rid of these. And what I am also going to do, since I don't want... As you can see, it takes quite a while for each frame to render or to bring up. I will solo only this layer with the masks, and I will turn this back to add so I can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on subtract, but what I do need to do right now, because I deleted this earlier, I am going to add another mask. So you press G to bring up the pen tool and just make this big, giant, ugly mask around it. And that's going to bring up all that stuff back, but right now I don't care about that. All I care about right now is so that just so that I can see this area. What I am going to do is from where I left off here, I'm going to go to the next frame and you can see they start moving and that's when things get off. So you kind of just go through and move these points. Just move the points, bring them as close as you can. And depending on how big the shot is, you know, or how the size of it, depends on or will dictate how close you need to be with everything this one's pretty fast shot and whatever so I don't need to necessarily worry about some of these things like back here that'll that keys out but going around the legs and the feet and just getting in as much of these bad shadows as you possibly can and as you can see this is a very time-consuming process. It, it, the kind of general rule of thumb is it will take you approximately one hour to cut out one second of footage. So when you have 15 elements that are, you know, about a second apiece, that's 15 hours just on one shot. And that's before you end up doing all of the other compositing things like light wraps and um, color grading and adding in visual effects like muzzle flashes and things like that. So rotoscoping is a very time consuming and tedious aspect. And if you can get away with not doing it, that is the best way to shoot your films. If you can do as little rotoscoping as possible because it is a time consumer and it is expensive. So go to the next frame. You can see things are getting out of line. You end up, Got to go around the barrel here so that we can still keep the barrel. I'm going to have to add in another vertice because now I got this new area that is starting to show up. So you just click on the line when you get that little plus on there, and then you can add another vertice, bring this up, and just play with your splines here. Periodically, you're going to want to go through and just check everything just to make sure everything's coming out fine, looking good. 
And then another thing that you can do is depending on how much movement is going on, you can go maybe a couple frames forward. So like the movement of it is pretty much the same. Like on the foot around here, you go two frames forward and it moves about the same distance, not quite, but you can go, you can jump two frames ahead or a couple frames ahead or whatever. And you can try to let after effects interpolate the amount of distance that your masks have moved. So we're going to try that one out. And now we can go back, go back one frame and some things are a little off. So you just got to move, nudge them back into place where they go. And if you get smooth movements, you will save a lot of time instead of going frame by frame. Maybe you can skip three frames or five frames or 10 frames, depending on the type of shot. And I don't know what happened. So I don't know if that means I crashed or whatever. All right, guys, that was a painful bunch of minutes. And I can, you can see as you're scrubbing through, you don't see any of the ground anymore. Everything's kind of blending in. It still kind of pops out when you look over here. You know, she's not blending in very well. That can be fixed once you throw a light wrap in and once this is at full resolution. So I'm going to render out a test of this and it will be shown right after this so thanks for uh watching this tutorial on a down and dirty rotoscoping and watching a real one happen for a real project instead of coming up with something and kind of you know making it up as you go this is a real project that is, i've been working on for months and it was nice to share a little bit of my pain that i've been experiencing for the past six months with you and i hope you come back for the next tutorial we have many more in mind to show you guys some of the things that we've learned a little bit of an insight into what we do on the post-production end of things so once again this is mitch from hothead productions and i'll see you guys later